Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from the Cargo Looks maintenance hangar. Today, we'll be answering the question, do airplanes have ABS such as cars have? And if so, how do airplanes decelerate on a contaminated runway and why? You better fasten your seatbelts for this one. There's a video full of braking action ahead of us. So let's get started. And what gate are you going to? Alpha 6, Emirates 305. You're waiting for that little Virgin America Airbus guy? I guess. Wow, that's amazing. To be able to fly, an airplane has to accelerate to high speeds in order to generate the necessary lift via its wings. Now, this puts a huge amount of kinetic energy into the whole system. Now, while being airborne, speed reduction is achieved solely by aerodynamic drag, but once the tires make contact with the runway, other devices such as the thrust reversers, deployed ground spoilers and brakes inside the wheel rims help decelerating the aircraft. To put this huge energy into perspective, imagine a 747-8 freighter with a maximum landing weight of 340 tons moving around at 150 knots at the moment of touchdown. That's over 1.1 billion joules of energy within this moving system. Hard to imagine? That's the amount of kinetic energy an average car has if it were to be traveling around 4,300 kilometers. Yeah, no, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> now back to the topic. Now this energy has to be then converted to achieve a speed reduction. Now the brakes are doing that in form of thermal energy, simply known as heat created purely by friction. Now, modern airplane brakes are packages containing multiple disc brakes made out of carbon fiber, such as these right here. Now, every wheel has its own set of brakes, so on the 747, that's 16 brake packages. Now, just to give you a rough idea, a brake package costs above 100 grand each. You can do the math. Some rare aircraft, such as the FedEx Boeing 727, even have nose wheel braking, but proved to be less effective over time and was removed later on. So to activate the brakes, the pilot pushes the rudder pedals with his toes, resulting in this tilt movement. Yes, I know, modern jet airplanes have an auto brake system, auto brake one, two, three, and four, and max auto. But that's the topic for another week. The pedals themselves can tilt independently, allowing so-called differential braking, which enables better steering and maneuvering. But let's have a closer look on the wheel behavior while braking. Now the brake discs are separated by so-called stator plates. While braking, the whole assembly is then hydraulically compressed by these cylinders, causing friction between the carbon discs and the stators, resulting in reduction of the wheel rotational speed. Now, in theory, to minimize the braking distance, brake pressure is constantly increased, while in return, the wheel speed decreases. Well, in reality, it doesn't work quite like that. Now, wheel braking in general works in a way that incorporates slip in our movement. Now, 10% slip, for example, means that while the airplane covers 10 meters, the wheels only roll off a distance of nine meters. The result is braking action, and a lot of that slip is tire rubber abrasion. Now, the worst and least effective case is when the brake pressure reaches its maximum and the slip reaches 100% causing the wheels to lock. Now the locked wheels don't slip anymore, they start skidding. Now because the tire isn't spinning in the locked position, braking is purely achieved by sliding friction between the runway surface and the rubber tire. This condition can lead to serious blowouts, which then on the other hand lead to structural damage by hurled tire debris, sparks resulting in possible fire or even loss of control. So to prevent this from happening, engineers came up with a system, so-called the anti-skid system or protection. 
It basically works just like your car's ABS, the anti-lock braking system. Nowadays, every production car comes with this particular system. So basically speaking, while braking, the brake pressure is electrically adjusted to constantly prevent the wheels from locking up. But more about that in a second. Now in some older models, you are still able to actually deactivate the ABS manually, which I don't recommend unless you're as good as a driver as Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> so the airplane's anti-skid system consists of wheel sensors and hydraulic control valves, which are connected and operated by an anti-skid control unit. Now the wheel sensors have two main functions. First off, they detect if the wheels are touched down and started spinning. If they don't, the control unit regulates that no brake pressure can be applied prior to touchdown, preventing the wheels from being locked up before actually touching down. Secondly, the sensors monitor the wheels deceleration speed and therefore detect imminent skidding and wheel locking. If an upcoming lock condition is detected, the control unit triggers the control valves to release the brake pressure, allowing the wheels to speed up again until they are out of a possible danger to lock. And then the valves allow hydraulic pressure to be applied again, and this process repeats itself until the aircraft reaches a specific speed low enough for the anti-skid system to automatically shut off. The system comes even more to play in case of contamination, for example on a wet or snow-covered runway. As the friction coefficient is reduced between the tires and the contaminated runway, therefore the likelihood of a tire locking up during deceleration is much higher. And a good example of what happens if the anti-skid system isn't working is Air Transat Flight 236. The plane ran out of fuel due to a fuel leak caused by improper maintenance and the captain, an experienced glider pilot, flew the plane to a successful emergency landing in the Azores. But due to the loss of both engines resulting in no reverse thrust and no hydraulic pressure for the anti-skid and auto brake system, the pilots had to bring the plane to a stop on a much shorter than normal runway solely on manual braking applications, resulting in locking and bursting all eight main gear tires and rubbing them down to the bare metal. Understand this was not the pilot's fault at all, they actually did a great job saving everyone on board and stopping the aircraft in time. Lesson to take away from this one is know your systems and be a good glider pilot before you become an airline pilot. And by the way, the same goes for rejected takeoffs. Now, once the aircraft reaches a specific speed in the takeoff run above 85 knots on the 747, the anti-skid system activates automatically to be ready in case sudden braking has to be applied. Also, an important fact, the lighter the plane, the more likely it is to skid as the needed weight to press the water aside during aquaplaning isn't given. But yet again, that's the reason for the anti-skid system, a clever system to make your next deceleration after landing safer. That's it for today. If you have any more questions or explanatory notes about the anti-skid systems or some other aviation related questions, feel free to comment below. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing all the best. See you next week, your Captain Joe.